All right, so as I'm starting to try and figure out my rotations, there's a number of things that might be useful to know in the middle of the game. For example, figuring out which block is which one would be really nice to know. So that when I'm doing my rotations, if I have a block out of place, I can go find out which one it is. So using the debugger is really useful. It's the red arrow. So a couple things you can do with this. If you know which variable you're looking for, you can just add something called a watch. So if I want to look at global.shape, it'll actually show me the value. And as I'm playing it, it'll actually tell me what that is. If I want to look at all the global variables, under tools, you can look at global variables here. So down here at the bottom is where all my global variables are. One thing that's really nice to note is these block 1, 2, 3, and 4, there are right here. These are the ID numbers that got assigned into them. If you look down here on this window where mouse ID is, if I hover my mouse over something, it'll tell me what the ID number of that object is. So hey, look, that's 100,045. And if I look over here, that's block one. If I hover my mouse over that, that's 46. That's block two. So using these two windows, I can figure out which block is where. Also, I can figure out which shape is currently going on, what it thinks the rotation is. Kind of handy. Um, if you've never used it before, the other things you can do with this, you can actually look at how many instances are in the room. So, hey look, there's a lot of walls. A setup, four move blocks, and a controller. Oh, and it also listed all the ID numbers, by the way, too. Also, if I want to look at a particular one, so if I want to look at 100048, I can either type that number in by show local variables, so I can do 100048. Or if there's only one object in the room, I could use the name of it. Because I don't know if you remember this from first year, but if you use the name of an object, that actually is the first instance of that object in the room. So here's the information for 100048. It's x and y are these things here, direction, speed, all that information is here. Um, Let's see, what else can you do with this? It turns out you can actually execute code on the fly as well. So you could actually change like variables in the middle of your game. So if I was like, uh, with global dot block one x, x minus equals 32. Oh, I messed that up. Oh, I probably can't do that because that runs it into a solid. Never mind. That runs into a solid, and that's why. But you can actually change like the speed of blocks. You can change your x and y positions. You can destroy a bunch of blocks using that. I actually use that when testing your games. If I'm like, breakout game needs to go to the next level right now. Destroy all the blocks. Um, you can slow it down. So you can set the game speed. By default, it's 30. You can change it to like 15, 10, whatever you want to actually uh, make it so you can see what's going on. It's got commands here for restarting, all that kind of stuff. Kind of useful. For our uh, purposes for rotations, mostly we're going to be probably looking at the global variables and looking at where particular objects are in the room.